In the 2010s, St. Lucia was hit by two major weather events, 2010's Hurricane Tomas and 2013's Christmas Eve trough. In 2014, to address the subsequent damage and increase St. Lucia's resilience to extreme weather events and climate change, the government of St. Lucia joined forces with the World Bank Group to create the DVRP. DVRP stands for Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project. It is one of St. Lucia's largest collaborative projects with a donor-funded agency comprising of 126 major activities. Civil works all over the island are an integral facet of the DVRP. One of those civil works activities includes construction of a new Piai bridge in the south of the island. The new bridge is approximately 1.6 meters higher than the original bridge was, and that is to provide greater protection against rising water levels, which is what affected the last bridge. So this bridge is expected to be a much more resilient to environmental impact than the original bridge was. OB Sadu Engineering was the contractor selected for the project, while DVRP sought the services of Argentinian engineering firm ACNA to manage the PI Bridge project. This, this project is a, it's a good project that um, is taking care um, of what happened in the old, old bridge. The bridge saw extensive damage all the way back in 1994 during Tropical Storm Debbie and again after the 2013's Christmas Eve trough. Designed to accommodate extensive flooding and withstand extreme weather events, the structure will include two lanes and a sidewalk. The project is the construction or the, yeah, the construction of a, of a composite bridge, which is a steel frame with a concrete deck. The bridge is a 25 meter long double lane bridge, which is supposed to replace the, replace the single lane uh, Bailey Bridge that has been existing in that location for a while. Another component of the project is the rehabilitation of the area after the project, which is not just the bridge, the road alignments after the bridge, etc. It is also the environmental rehabilitation. Uh, we've done some of the riprap that you may notice that is supposed to be extended to ensure proper flow within the river. And also the replanting of the area is also part of the project in that we're not just taking out the trees that we took out. We're looking to transform the entire area into a more um, leisurely environmental sort of setting. Aside from infrastructural damage, Hurricane Tomas and the Christmas Eve trough caused severe damage to St. Lucia's rivers. Every year, over two million Eastern Caribbean dollars is spent to the silt rivers across St. Lucia. A long-term solution was sought which led to an initiative called the Assessment of Major Rivers and Rehabilitation. The Assessment of and Rehabilitation of Major Rivers um, was identified as an activity um, by the Department of Forestry. This led to the design of a pilot nature-based restoration intervention of the five rivers. Bioengineering and agroforestry solutions will follow the assessments. The five rivers are the Four Door, Trumase, Maki, Cul-de-Sac and Shock Rivers. So the assessments that are happening now and we would have um, hired or contracted an international firm um, CBCL, you know, out of Canada. CBCL is a Canadian bioengineering firm. The company has significant experience in nature-based river restoration. So we're a multidiscipline, full suite engineering, environmental services company, um, really providing engineering services full for all different services throughout. Designs for the interventions will be based on detailed river and watershed assessments. These watersheds has been critical to uh, providing water for St. Lucia. We had um, a geophysicist, so essentially a geologist, and so they were looking at the large-scale geology of the island, looking at the different aspects of what the geology is. Assess 
the current um, status of the rivers with respect to the level of, of degradation of the river banks, the current conditions in terms of the hydrology. One of the issues that happens along the rivers is not only do the rivers move and meander and there's a natural process of erosion, but there's also a human impact to the rivers. Uh, that could be land use, whether it's farming or commercial or people allowing cattle and stuff to graze down to the, to the river. Is there homes being built along them? Based on the assessment, CBCL has indicated a variety of recommendations. We started to look at um, different methods that could be used as kind of proven bioengineering te techniques to stabilize the riverbanks. And bioengineering is essentially using plants and vegetation and natural type um, of sources materials to help stabilize the banks. So this may include anything from planting trees, um, grasses and other um, vegetation, um, sometimes in specific patterns and specific designs um, and layouts um, in order to stabilize river banks. We've also looked at the uh, hydraulic model of, the, of all these different watersheds in the northern portion of the island. So that from that we basically build a 3D terrain within modeling software and we basically model the watersheds to represent what's going on during these various storm events. So a lot of that data would have been used to, um, to set the stage for the rehabilitation plan. Using that data, um, this would be used to inform the designs for the bioengineering methods that would be recommended along these rivers. Stakeholder consultations played a major role on the rehabilitation plans. That is stakeholder consultation of government agencies and residents. The process would reduce the need for desilting rivers every year and ultimately reduce the risk of flooding in all vulnerable communities. In 2022, the DVRP facilitated two training exercises for first responders, disaster management staff and community leaders. We wanted to equip them with tools and more knowledge on how to assess damages after um, an event, after a disaster, how to assess damages, how to not just um, physical damages but also human need. The two training exercises were the Damage Assessment and Need Analysis or DANA and the Community Emergency Response Teams or CERT. Our main facilitator for the course was Mr. Earl Athers. Brigadier General Retired Earl Arthurs is the Training Institute Manager for Regional Security System or RSS. He is also the Regional Consultant for Training and Operations. He knows his stuff, so it was very informative. As the name suggests in Dana, participants were trained in the initial assessment of damage after a natural disaster. That one focused on getting community volunteers and the local people, the, 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 the different agencies within St. Lucia to be able to conduct damage assessment. And we're talking more about the, the IDA, which is the initial damage assessment. What are your plans? What do you do? Um, who are the persons that you contact? We teach them how to interview the resident because it's the needs analysis is damage assessment and needs analysis. And the needs part comes from the needs of the people. Three days of training included eight training modules, covered topics such as data gathering, analysis, and interpretation of needs, and the measurement of event impact. We made it very practical in that we didn't have damage houses for them to go and assess. So I have put together like about, about 70 pictures of damage houses. The CERT training program was also conducted by Mr. Authors. When you deal with CERT, the Community Emergency Response Teams, um, it's now different in that we are teaching them to be first responders. But they are not going to be expert first responders. Because we have the fire and the police and all these people who are, and the medical people, ambulance people who are first responders for real. But we know that in the community, these people are going to be the first ones to meet the casualty, to go and search for people, to do different things before the, the authorities show. Two weeks after Dana ended, the trough happened in Corinth um, and Brazil will be impacted. 
and these were the individuals that went out to, the, to do the damage assessment. And um, for us, it was a proud moment because whilst you teach, whilst they are training, you inform them that, okay, you will be called upon to assist in times of disaster. Most times that opportunity never comes or you never want it to come because you really do not want a disaster to happen. But it was amazing to see the amount of persons who showed up the following day at our office who had just been trained, volunteering to be part of the individuals, went out to do the assessment. I saw at least about 50 of those people actively engaged, going out, doing them the assessment, coming back to Nemo. And I recognized them, I see them in the Nemo. Um, and, and I asked them, how is it going? And they said, sir, going well. I'm glad I did that training. <laughs>